Shin Gojira. Today we're going to be talking about the Shogun figure Godzilla from the Reaction Figures line from Super 7. Shogun Warriors was a toy line licensed by Mattel in 1979 that was mainly made up of imported Japanese robots and vehicles from companies like Poppy. Of the line, only two Godzilla characters were produced, that being Godzilla and Rodan. The line was discontinued a year later because, and I mean this in the nicest way possible, stupid children shooting sh into their eyes, and unfortunately poor sales. A slightly more accurate version of this figure was produced by Toy Nami in 2015 and was themed after the 1964 design of Godzilla. An SDCC exclusive version was also made available featuring the classic colors in the new design. Hold it! I can hear it! It's gonna... Somebody's gonna say it! Huh? We lost NECA for this? Yes, you did. Get over it. Or as the kids say these days, so we're just gonna get right into it. Shogun Warriors Godzilla yet again exists, this time in a much smaller size. And I'm not going to lie, from the skin textures, to the fugly seams on his body, just about everywhere, to this god-awful, horrendous-looking face that really doesn't look good from any angle, and I do mean any angle, Super 7 knocked this out of the park. This is a one-to-one -one perfect recreation of Shogun Warriors Godzilla. And it's not just in terms of the figure, either. It's the box, too. Seriously, look at this. This is practically a one-to-one -one perfect recreation of the box with some obvious differences. The addition of reaction figures there, the different corner image. It's all really, really well done. I don't know, just the way that the image on the front is printed, it looks super duper retro. Super 7 really did knock it out of the park. Now, I don't know if this is what the side of the original box looked like. I'll try and find some pictures, but here you go. Same thing on the other side. We've got Godzilla Shogun figure Super 7 on top. Same thing on the bottom. And on the back, we have this very plain cardboard made in China. Super 7, Super7.com. 14 and up, adult collectible, not a toy. And now, moving on to paint, we've got the puke green as a base, a very fungal and infected looking yellow for the toes and the claws, darkened eye sockets with yellow rings for eyes, an unevenly applied pink for the nose, which, yes, you guessed it, is pretty much accurate. More of that fungal infection yellow for the teeth, more of that pinkish red for the inside of the mouth and the lips. And as far as paint goes, that is... Pretty much that. Some would say this is bad on purpose. No, it is retro on purpose, which is Super 7's shtick. They absolutely captured the derpy ugliness of the Shogun Warriors Godzilla character, so I'm gonna give it a full star. And seeing as how the figure was just as detailed as this thing is, I'm gonna give detail a full star as well. And the detail is just about everywhere, be it on the arms, even on the inside of the hands, on the back with the dorsal fins or spikes mountains, on the grody little pickle tail and feet. No detail on the bottom of the feet. Yeah, detail wise, this thing is perfect. Moving into articulation, and yes, don't worry, we'll talk about it soon. The arms can go all the way around. Do be careful over here. You don't want to scrape the paint off of the nails, so lightly bend it outwards so you can avoid that. The legs can kick up about that far. I honestly wouldn't push the legs any further than that. And they can kick back about this far. I do feel like these can go all the way around, but again, not risking breaking this. The tail can go all the way around, as can this very fugly goji head. Pingers! Take a good close look at this arm over here. Looks pretty normal, no? Well, moving on over to the other arm, you'll see that there's actually a little bit more space on the wrist over here. That's because Super 7 were genius and cool enough to actually include the detail, only, of the fist that would fire off of Godzilla's arm. It was a feature of the original Shogun Warriors Godzilla, but, you know, obviously, Godzilla never did that. <laughs> and although it would have been really cool to see this figure actually launch his freaking fist off of his arm, I do think this thing would have been a little bit more on the expensive side had that feature stayed. But you will be able to swivel at the wrist over here, which is honestly really, really cool. And now, for the gimmick. The only surviving gimmick. Uh, there's no wheels on the bottom of this guy's feet, and as we just discussed, his fist doesn't launch off of his arm. Pushing this stake into Godzilla's head will bring forth the fire breath and or tongue. This lovely little detail was an absolute must to include, and let me tell you, they pretty much nailed it. Yeah, for the most part, it's just a piece of red plastic with a fork at the top with some flame effects painted on, but that's exactly how it looked on the original, and I just love that it's spring-loaded. Yeah, yeah. 
Not going to do that a lot. And while, yes, it is not accurate to Godzilla's blue atomic breath, or purple, or red at times, it's still a really cool inclusion. And I love that it's spring-loaded. I really do. I really, really do. And from any angle, it looks like Godzilla is hawking a fiery loogie at somebody and unsuspecting victims below him, I imagine. Just look at him go. Yeah. You cannot run away from the terror of Shogun Goji. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to be including this little feature as part of articulation because you're doing something and it's moving and it's going to be part of paint as well since the flames are painted on and essentially this just makes the figure even better. So articulation wise, solid star and a nice little mini star for the painted flames on there being so very nice and epic looking. Yeah, Shogun Goji isn't going to be for everybody, and I've already seen a lot of people expressing just their distaste for this design and why Super 7 would start with this, but believe it or not, this is one of the most popular vintage Godzilla figures out there. They're extremely rare. Sometimes they're in really good condition, sometimes they are not. But for them to start with this, I just want to say that it's a power move. You're getting this out of the way first. Maybe they'll do a super or ultimate design for this. Bigger, more articulation, something like that. But you have to remember that there are two other major American Godzilla toy lines that we're not talking about here. Imperial and Trendmasters. And I don't think anything is really off the table here. But then again, I don't know what their contract with Toho is or what they're actually allowed to make and not. But seeing as how Super 7's thing is retro and retro American and maybe some Japanese thrown in there, who knows? Maybe we can even get some recreation of some classic M1 Marmot or even Gigabrain designs. Who Like really, who knows? It could go anywhere. For those of you just not feng shuiing with this design, that's perfectly fine. Super 7 is more than likely going to be tackling other designs. Don't worry about it. I highly doubt they're just going to be making just this in different colors. For real. Yes, the possibility of Treadmasters and Imperial is immense, and I don't know if people really understand what could happen with Super 7. If they have the rights, or if Toho has given them the okay to recreate that of Trendmasters figures, I need to put this down. That would be huge. And it's not just like a surface level thing. Seeing Trendmaster designs back, seeing Trendmasters paint schemes back, seeing the possibility of Doom Island level stuff, Godzilla the series level stuff, coming back under the Super 7 brand is crazy. There is a very big possibility of that. Now, I don't know too much about Godzilla the series. I don't know what, uh, you know, the whole Godzilla 1998 thing, rights, Tristar, this, that, the third. Don't know what's going on with that, but I imagine that there is a possibility. And even if there isn't, we still have the Godzilla Wars line. We have the 40th anniversary line. We have the Doom Island line. They could even bring back the Mega Mutations for all we know. There's so much that can be done with Trendmasters alone. And that's just talking in their Super and Ultra Ultimate figures. I don't even know what to expect for their reaction line. Don't know what they're going to do, but I would love to see like a Heisei Showa era classic design much like this. I would love it if they actually did all the designs of Godzilla in this size. That would be awesome. Super 7, please. I'm getting excited now. I have to stop. I have to relax. And by all means, do your different variants. I'll buy them. I mean, you've sold me with this guy alone. But anyway, everybody, that's about going to wrap it up for me. Patrons, thank you so much for becoming Shin Rob Jira. Patrons, check out my social media and my merch. Please join the Shin Rob Jira Island Discord page. A lot of cool people over there. You can make some new friends, talk about Godzilla, the works. And I will see you all tomorrow with a Shin Godzilla video celebrating five years of Shin Godzilla. And then after that, I'll see you with a bunch of Ultraman Trigger stuff because I have to get to recording that and I have a bunch of stuff that came in. And uh, yeah, that's it. Bye, everybody. He's so ugly. I love him.